You never get wheatfish up this far north. Usually in the south you get them. If you catch them here, they're usually a bycatch. Yeah, it's usually rare, but they've been in real good numbers this year. You know, you can usually count on getting four or five a trip, so hopefully we can, uh, we can match those numbers. we got fish rising on the surface. We're going to target wheat fish in today's show. Hang with us. We're heading out right now. we got fish breaking. Let's get to it. They, they haven't been abundant since, uh, you know, for the past six or, or, eight, or seven years, but it seems like hopefully. I mean, it's almost too soon to say if it's a comeback, but this year I've heard great reports from New Jersey, from really? Rhode That's Island. Awesome. Yeah and obviously here from Massachusetts, so hopefully this trend continues. Now the key with the weak fish, Chris, is you want it right on the bottom. That bait needs to be right on the bottom, not like you see the stripers, these are probably small bass right over the surface. But the weakies are gonna be sitting under, underneath eating grass shrimp and worms and other smaller baits like that. Chris, a little bit about this area we're fishing. Right above us, we have a real shallow mud flat. It's only about two or three feet deep. But you see right in front of us here, it narrows up. It's a, a little bit deeper, about six feet. And on the outgoing tide, it flushes all the grass shrimp and the worms and the, the crabs and the little bait fish. All those things passes them right through here. So that makes a great ambush point for weak fish or stripers or even fluke or bluefish. You can see the way that you have a big body of water to the north of us here. And like you said, this is a natural choke point right in here. Um, and fish that I got the other day, my first weak fish I'd ever gotten, it was really exciting. If you haven't gotten a weak fish, it almost looks like a sea run brown trout with uh, fangs though. You know, I guess is the best way to describe it if you haven't caught one. But um, to be able to come out here and target it in New England? Yeah, who would have thought, Chris? It's been a few years at least. There we go. That's there the right go, kind. There we go, Jimmy. Now, Chris. Well, he was just dead drifting it, huh? He was. Now, with a weak. Now, you want to fish these with a pretty light drag because, like I said, they've got real soft mouths. So, you'll see I'm not horsing them in. I'm just kind of taking my time with them because I don't want to pull that hook out. these real crazy head shakes. I mean, you can see the rod's a lot more frantic than if we were, I was tied into a striper. Can you, can you walk them over this way? I'm gonna come around your right side. Yep, that's a weak fish. That's awesome. You'd had a bite earlier. I did, I missed one earlier doing the same thing. It was really just, just sitting real low, right on the, or sitting on the bottom, barely moving, and he came up and I just felt that real light tap. Beautiful color on that fish, huh? Wow, that's a beautiful fish. Look at that's that. A, that's a pretty weak fish. That is a beautiful weak fish. This is really very, very rare out there to be able to go out and target weak fish, guys. This has been going on now for the last couple of weeks, and, and that's when we started getting into them. I should say you guys started getting into them. Absolutely gorgeous fish. This fish picked it up right on the bottom. I had a whack a little earlier, almost dead drifted. It. Jimmy and I were talking, it started sliding down. Well, you got him right in the corner of the mouth, Jimmy, huh? Yeah, he, uh, he definitely wanted it. Jimmy, what a beautiful fish, man. Really nice fish. You can tell he's been feeding well. He's got a little bit of a belly on him. and uh... The colors in them? Just like you said, he's got like all. Oh, he's got like a purplish hue. It's got it just they're, they're really something. Yeah, every way you turn them in the daylight, they, they kind of reflect yeah, a different yeah. color: greens yeah. and purples. They have the yellow fins. So. This fish is really healthy. Jimmy just picked up the first one. We've had fish rising out here, although I don't think they've been weak fish that have been rising. But that just means it's bait in here. We're gonna go ahead and let this guy go, Jimmy. Beautiful fish. Let's get back at it. Let's do it. Kind of just slide out. Yeah, he's not in any real hurry to get back. Nice fish. Oh, thank you. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm heading back out with Jimmy. I just switched up. Jimmy's known to have the nicest gear in there. He's kind enough to let me use his G Loomis rod. It's got a nice fast action tip. And also, I think we've covered a lot of water here, so I want to actually try to see if I can throw it a little bit further out right now. 
We downsized to the small, I'm gonna stick with the larger one, see if, see if I can get further out. Jimmy and I have fan cast this entire area. I'm heading out with him right now. Let's see if we can't pick something up. Hang with us, guys. We've got good moving water right now. The tide's starting to drop out. Jimmy switched over to the fly rod. That was a nice cast right there. Jimmy's knuckling it for the camera. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah, all of a sudden it just seemed like it picked up, huh? Yeah, it's uh, all of a sudden there's fish all over the surface again, and uh, um, we've started to get some hits. You just missed one a couple minutes ago. One of the things I want to do is we want to make sure we cover. When you go out fishing, guys, there he is. There he is, right there. Nice, nice. One of the things I was just saying is you want to make sure you cover a lot of water. And uh, Jimmy and I were really fan casting this whole area. And, um, and it just seems like one has been teasing me the whole time. And, and uh, as Jim was saying earlier, these fish probably won't go that far. They kind of find their own little spot. They'll find their own little spot and uh, they'll hunker down right there. Now Chris, is that, big, is that the bigger uh, Ron Z you have on there? This is the bigger Ron Z, I did. Oh, and we no went back. Jimmy had caught two really nice fish on a little bit smaller of a Ron Z. And I, I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure I got the other side of the channel because these fish are sitting in the deep water. Yeah, they've been uh, been all the way out there. I had one hit about a little closer in, but all, all my other hits have been uh, kind of at the far end. Looks like we've got a good fish on there. Is this a bass or a weak fish? Can you tell? No, I think it's a weak fish. Yeah, it is. That's a good weak That's a really good weak fish. Hey, Chris, it's about, I think this is the biggest weak fish I've seen so far uh, this spring. Biggest one I've certainly seen on Cape Cod. That is a really, really good fish. It's funny that, Jimmy, I, I, I went to the larger only for the distance alone, you know? And, um, I'm a little bit nervous. The end game on these things because they, if you get the head out they of the water, they do those crazy head they shakes. They go crazy. They really go crazy. Now, Chris, when a weak fish gets to this size, they call them tide runners, just like you call a big striped bass a cow. Right. A big weak fish is called a tide. I had runner, heard that. that. I love the name too, the tide runners. Because I love and, that. And they're, they're called that because they like this moving water. Let's see. Let's make sure we get this guy in. Jimmy, I'm gonna walk him right over to you. Want me to grab him? Yeah. Why don't you grab him? Really nice fish. I got him, Jimmy. If you got him, you got and let him go, and I'll grab him. I'll walk him over this way. I want to walk him right into you, okay? Okay. Look at that guy, huh? Look at the, look at the fangs on him. Hey, Chris, yeah. congratulations, <laughs> That's man. That's awesome, that huh? Really pretty weak. Thing. Look at that thing. Look at the colors in it. Jimmy, I gotta thank you, man, for getting us out here. I know last night you were saying, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. I was a little apprehensive, but I'm glad we did. Hey, Chris, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we got a couple. Jimmy gets these things all the time down in New Jersey, but we don't get them that often up here in New England. So for us to be able to have a uh, weak fish bite like this and be able to target them is excellent. It's just a great to see if we get this guy to yeah, off. I hope this keeps up for the next couple years, Chris. Sure wouldn't mind it. Look at that fish. Is that beautiful? No matter where you catch a weak fish like that, that's a great catch right there. You know, it's probably about 27 inches, you know, maybe 28 inches. It's a, that's a beautiful yeah. fish. Now, the weak fish in here are feeding on, on small worms and grass shrimp and other, other small baits. So we're using pretty, uh, pretty small jigs for them. Uh, they seem to like the color pink a lot. They also like purple and chartreuse. Seems the brighter the color, the better for weak fish. I just switched up to, to one of my favorite lures from when I used to fish down in New Jersey. It's the, the Zoom Super Salty Fluke, and this is the, the bubblegum color. I've got it on a, on a quarter ounce jig head, and this, is, uh, this has been a weak fish killer for years. It's early May, so the bays on the south side of the Cape are really alive with a lot of different species of fish. There's herring in here moving up the rivers to spawn. It seems like the runs are doing pretty well this year. I've heard good reports from a lot of the herring runs. Uh, so that's good news. It's good news to see that that important bait fish is, is on the rise as well. And, and we were talking in the last week or so about uh, getting out of here. He's been doing really well with Kevin Blinkoff on the, on the uh, weak fish. This is something that anyone can do. You guys started, what, two weeks ago? 
Yeah, we, we started looking for these fish about two or two weeks ago. Um, we heard some reports on them and, and uh, actually hit them in the kayak first. Then we found some places you can get them from shore. And it's, it, that's a great part about these bays and these backwaters is you don't need a boat to get into the fish. You know, you find, if you, you find a good access point somewhere like this where, where it's a little in, inlet, you've got some moving water, you'll certainly find stripers and, and hopefully if, uh, you have a good shot of weak fish too if they, if they continue to be abundant. And, and I imagine you could go on anything like a Google Earth, Google Maps, anything like that. You can look at all of these finger inlets that come in and then look at your choke points on them. Because I was fishing with two of the guys in the office, Ryan and Tank, and uh, we were actually over at Lacoy. There's a nice choke point in there. And you can see, having fished a couple of different places now, you can see where these fish are going to set up. Yeah, it's a, you, you just uh, like you said, you hit the nail on the head. Look on Google Maps, and then you, ch you can find these little choke points like this, where they have a bigger, wider bay that's drained by a little narrow inlet. And uh, there's, there's probably dozens of them from yeah. Connecticut up to up to Cape Cod. I mean, Cape Cod seems to be the southern or the, the northernmost range of the weak fish. They don't seem to move too much further than that. Should be able to get to a couple more. I'm gonna drop down below here and see if I can. Yeah, current's starting to move pretty good now. Awesome. <laughs> ah. Oh, doubled up, Jimmy. Nice. Awesome, oh. huh? <laughs> Look at that. Doubled up on weak fish. Chris, literally, it was on the sink. It I, wasn't. I, I, I threw it out there, Jimmy. I came out. I got a whack right out of the gate. And uh, Chris, this is unbelievable. We got off to a little bit slower start. Now look at now we're doubled up. Jimmy, that seems like it's a weak fish. The way it's staying down. Yeah, it feels like it's another weak fish, Chris. He's got those real frantic head shakes. And guys, welcome back. I just made my first cast after releasing that nice weak fish, and I hit one. Jimmy came out, made his first cast, and he hit one as well. Doubled up on weak fish. This doesn't happen. No, not on Cape Cod. <laughs> oh yeah. That, it, Chris, it's amazing. A lot of the fish that we've been hearing about this year, and there have been a lot of them, seem to be right in this size, size range, where they're about 18 to 24 inches. Um, it means there, you know, a couple years ago, there was a real good spawn of weak fish, and hopefully, they'll continue to get bigger, and we'll see, see some more big ones. Another beautiful weak fish. I've just made my four. I think Jimmy's got at least five. He had one pop off in front that's probably was his six. That's a beautiful fish right there. Let's get this guy back in. We're gonna I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna get my hand out of there without the There he goes, catch and release. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get this one back in the water. The second half of our weak fish double header. We're going to put him back and see if we can't double up again. Chris, seems like I, I want to get back in. out there right now. 